Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Today's episode of Philo Vance is provided by Radio Archives. Radio Archives is a seller of high-quality old-time radio collections, Pulp Fiction reprint ebooks, and Pulp Fiction audiobooks. You can send an email to detectives at radioarchives.com to get a free, no-strings-attached sample of each of these three types of products. In addition, they, over the course of their years of business, have acquired 36,000 old-time radio transcription disc, which they are digitizing and making available to their subscribers. I've received the first three months and have really enjoyed what I've heard, including episodes of programs that I really love with uh, episodes that are uncirculated, including Our Miss Brooks, Heartbeat Theater, uh, Burns and Allen, and the Hour of Charm, as well as introducing me to a few programs I'd never heard of. You can get the first month's transfers to get an idea of what this uh, subscription is like. Each month, they send you 600 different uh, transcription transfers, and you can sample the first month for $59.98, all of which goes to support the great detectives of old time radio. And if you like what you hear, you can sign up for a subscription for 50% off the going rate of $120 a month for only $60 per month. Just go to transfers.greatdetectives.net to learn more. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Follow Vance. The original air date, May the 23rd, 1950, and the title is The Money Machine Murder Case. <laughs> Ah, you see how simple it is, Mrs. Willoughby? Uh Uh-huh. You make your own money, just exactly the way the government does. Now, you put this blank piece of paper in the machine. Uh Uh-huh. Turn the crank. And out comes a brand new $1 bill. It certainly does. Yeah? Now, those $1 bills I made up yesterday with this machine, you uh, took them to the bank? Yes. And they said it was real money. Oh, you see what I mean? And you saw me make them. I made them right in front of your eyes with this machine. You sure did. Now, you give me 10,000 bucks and it's yours. You can make as much money as you want, whenever you want. $10,000? That's right. Mm. Tell me, Mr. Crane, why are you so anxious to sell this machine? All you would have to do is turn the crank and out would come real bills. Lady, I've got a lot of machines. I want to sell them and quit. That's simple, isn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. You've got plenty of dough, but there's enough larceny in you. What did you say? Uh, Don't let it bother you, lady. There's larceny in everybody. Proof that it's in you is that you asked me to come back today. Mr. Crane, I'll give you $10,000 for your machine. Good. Providing I'm sure that the paper you insert in the machine is actually the one that comes out as a dollar bill. Oh. That ought to be simple. Yeah. I'll put my initials on the blank paper. If my initials appear on the bill when it comes out, I'll buy the machine. Now, wait, I've got a pen and ink right here. Now, hand me one of your blank pieces of paper. Uh, all right. Here you are. Thank you. My initials, E.W. There we are. All right, Mr. Crane. Okay, I'll take the paper, put it in the machine. (laughs) Take out a brand new dollar bill. There you are. Take a look at it, Mrs. Willoughby. 
A oh. brand new buck with the initials E.W. on it. Just as you put them on the blank piece of paper a second ago. It's the same piece of paper. And those are my initials, all right. Mm -hmm. Like I said. Now, what about the ten grand? What's to stop me from turning that crank handle ten thousand times, getting your ten thousand dollars, and paying you with that? Uh, nothing. Except I don't deliver you the paper you need till I get your money. Mm. I have it here in my safe. I'll get it. Mm -hmm. And I've got the paper all cut out to dollar bill size right here, too. You get the money, Mrs. Willoughby. And from now on, you can manufacture your own. The best kind. Handmade. Markham speaking. Is this the district attorney? Yes, it is. Well, it better be. And you'd better do something about me. I'd like very much to. Don't be cute. I'm Emily Willoughby, and I've been swindled. I'm the district attorney, and I'm very sorry. Mrs. Willoughby, tell me exactly what happened, and I'll do what I can. Well, somebody sold me a money-making machine, and it doesn't work. And I paid $10,000 for it yesterday. Aren't you calling me 24 hours too late? What? Well, Never mind when I'm calling you. I want to do something. I want you to do something. I paid the man ten... I know, $10,000. He demonstrated a machine and took blank paper and converted it into $5 bills. $1 bills. Oh. But how did you know what he did? It's a very old racket, Mrs. Willoughby. And it wouldn't work except that people such as yourself are looking for something for nothing. Well, oh, really? Have you any idea who the man is? He said his name was Crane. Joe Crane. Do you know him? No, I don't. Do you know where you can get him so you can arrest him? No, but I'll have a man put on it right away. You shouldn't have had anything to do with Crane, Mrs. Willoughby. Look, don't talk to me like that. He's the criminal. I'm not. The only reason you aren't, Mrs. Willoughby, is because the machine didn't work. Come on in. The door ain't locked. Hi, Joe. Hiya, Sniffy. How's Jicks? So-so. What's with you? Oak. Get the money? What money? Oh, gonna be like that, huh? Joe, I'll give you a money-making machine and a gimmick that makes it foolproof. You had a sucker. Give me my cut of the dough you got or the machine. I couldn't get rid of it. The sucker got smart. Yeah, so I'll take the machine. Well... Uh, where is it? I can get a front man get rid of it easy. Come on, let's have it and I'll blow I don't have it here. Oh, so that's the way it is, huh? Come on, Crane, stop stalling. Give me that machine or I'll break you in a dime. Where, where is it? Where is it? Let go of me. Give me my machine. Give it or I'll choke it up. Yeah. Double crossing rat. Use the knife on me, did you? Jeannie. Oh, what's this? Get out of here. Uh-uh. You killed Sniffy, huh, Joe? Now, look, don't scream. Don't do nothing. Just get out of here fast. He was choking me. I had to do it. You wouldn't want me dead, would you? You killed him, Joe. Yeah, I killed him. Now, get out of here before you get wild and start yelling so somebody will hear you and get the cops. Go on, beat it. I don't want you getting hysterical. Hmm. Seems to me you're the one getting hysterical, Joe. No, I'm not. Now, take it easy. I won't blow. All I'm going to do is help you get rid of that knife you're holding and this body. <laughs> Well, Vance, there's the body, lying just where a farmer found it. Hmm. It obviously had been knifed somewhere else and thrown from a car. Do you know who the victim is, Markham? Sergeant Heath identified him. A larcenous individual named Sniffy Edwards. I don't suppose this is any case that will intrigue you, but you were in my office when the call came. And, and you... I insisted on going with you. I know. Notice anything peculiar about Sniffy, Markham? No. He has a knife wound in his chest, and he's dead, which certainly is normal enough. Look at his shoes. His soles are very thick. Well, yes, I suppose they are. But this isn't a case for you, Vance. It's undoubtedly an underworld murder, and Sergeant Heath will get whoever killed this man. Mind if I look at the soles a minute? Go ahead. Uh, your penknife, Vance, you need that to look with? You never can tell what it will help me see. What you're doing is a little illegal, Vance. 
Oh, my friend, is there such a thing as a little illegal? <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. You find anything? Yes. There was a piece of paper in the sole of the shoe. Take a look. It's a diagram of some kind of machine. No. An arrow indicates where blank paper is inserted. Another arrow where money comes... Vance, I know what this is. It's the diagram for a money-making machine. Undoubtedly. I got a complaint this morning from a Mrs. Willoughby that she had been swindled by a Joe Crane who sold her a money-making machine. This couldn't be a coincidence. In all probability, it isn't. I had a man trace Joe Crane. He called in his address just before we left. I think perhaps we ought to see Crane. What about it? I'm with you. Let's go call on Joe Crane and see if this plan for a money-making machine was the instigation of his plan to murder Sniffy Edwards. <laughs> Come on, Jeannie, hurry it up. Okay, okay, Joe, but this valise is heavy. It's the last one, though. We're all packed and ready to move. You got plenty of gas in the car? Yeah, it's loaded up to the top. I got a 15-gallon can in the back, so we don't have to stop for at least 500 miles. Oh, good. Here, I'll put that bag in the back here. Close the back up. Now, come on. Let's get in and get going. Uh-huh. You think it's smart to blow town right after you're knocked off Sniffy? You think it's smarter to wait around here to get picked up? Oh, maybe. Nobody's got anything on you. Yeah, nobody's going to have either. That's the reason we're blowing. Wait a minute. Let me get in first. Okay. Hop in. Close the door and we'll get going. It's okay with me. I don't even care where we're going. As long as I'm with you. Yeah, we're off. We won't speed. We won't do nothing to attract attention. In a little while, we're in the clear with ten grand of Mrs. Willoughby's dough. Nobody to finger me for Sniffy's killing. Oh, sounds swell to me, Joe. Mm, gee, I like being with you. Move away, honey. Hmm? Gotta keep my mind on driving. I... Jeannie. Huh? There's a car following us. Where? How do you know it's following us, Joe? Take it easy. I oh, know. I'm going to step on it and see if it is. The other car's picking up speed, too. There are two guys in it, Joe. Cops, I guarantee. Well, they won't grab me. This car of mine can get away from anything on the road. You got my gun? Yeah, sure. Here, Joe. Take and shoot it out with them if they get close. Throw the gun out the window, quick. Throw it out the window? Sure, you dope. You want to get caught with it on you? Throw it when we go around this bend. Okay, Joe, I got rid of it. Now, let's see if we can get rid of that car. You're going 55 now. 58. I got my foot on the floor. This crate will pick up to 85 on a straightaway road. Just hold tight and say nothing. Gee, this is exciting. Yeah, sure, some exciting. If I don't lose that car in back of me, I get... Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, they're getting closer, Joe. And you made me throw your gun away. Oh, Joey. I can't lose them, Jeannie, so keep quiet and let me do the talking. I'm going to stop you made me throw your gun away, Joe. Why did you make me do it? You could have killed him when they drove up. Shut up and don't move. Well, what'll they do to us, Joe? What do you think? I don't know. To... I don't think they got a thing on us. Oh, well, not in a minute now. Here come the two guys. I know I see him. Remember what I told you. Shut up. Well, you two certainly led us a chase. I'm District Attorney Markham. You're Joe Crane. That's right. Who's the young lady with you, Crane? Who are you to be asking questions? He's Philo Vance. Who is she? Well, I... My girl. What do you want with me, D.A.? That remains to be seen. Right now, I want you to come back to my office with me. Then I'm going to call on Emily Willoughby and see if she can identify you as the man who sold her a money-making machine. That's the rap, huh? Part of it, Crane. There's a possibility we might be able to prove you killed a man named Sniffy Edwards, too. Edwards? Edwards, never heard of. Me either. I suppose you never heard of a money-making machine. That's right. The things these people don't know, Markham. Yes. Well, let's get going back to your office. I'm not half as concerned over what they don't know as they will be over what we do. Yes, that's him. That's definitely the man who sold me the money-making machine. A dame's off her beam. I never saw her before. Well, You're I... positive, Mrs. Willoughby? Yes, of course I am. Well, you have him right here? You have the machine your men picked up at my house right here? Well, Markham? We'll take care of him. Markham. Yes, Vance? 
Suppose you take Mrs. Willoughby into the next office and get her to sign a complaint against Crane. I want to talk to him. Certainly. Mrs. Willoughby? I'll be glad to sign a complaint. I'll sign anything just to make sure he's arrested. Well, Vance, what do we talk about? The weather? Baseball? Pick a subject. Don't be cute, Crane. You're in a spot. Mrs. Willoughby's identification is all Markham needs to send you away. Oh, really? So she identified me. So what? So I sold her a machine. So what? It's a legitimate business transaction. There's nothing wrong with that machine. Except that it doesn't make money, as you claim. Although, even if it did, that, of course, would be illegal. That would be the government's worry, not the district attorney's or yours. That's partially true, but the fact remains that the machine doesn't work. No? No. Look. Here's some of the paper that came with it. This hunk here. Just the size of a dollar bill. Put your initials on it. Put anything you want on it. What for? I'll show you it does work. Go ahead. Write something on the paper. Well... What's the matter? Can't you write? I think I will test you, Crane. I'll take my fountain pen and draw a little design on this paper. There. Okay. I take the paper. Put it in the machine. Turn the handle. And look what comes out. A brand new one dollar bill. Where's the design I put on the blank paper? On the bill. Here it is. Take a look. And that dough is good dough. You can take it to any bank. I'm quite certain it is really money. And that is the design I put on the blank paper. Look, I don't sell the money, just the machine. I'm not responsible for what people use it for. I ain't in competition with the government. Now, I think it'll be an idea if you talk to the district attorney and saw to it that the three of us get out of here. The three of you? Sure. Jeannie and me and this machine, which has you stopped so good you haven't the slightest idea how it works. This is District Attorney Markham. The money machine murder case is an unusual one. Philo Vance is quite certain that Snippy Edwards, an underworld character, was killed because he'd invented a money-making machine. And we are equally certain that a man named Joe Crane, whom we have had in custody, is the killer. Although we have a loss in the case against Crane, Vance is more interested in proving murder against him. We have let him and his girl out on bail. We don't know where they are. I wasn't scared. It was wonderful. The DA chasing me in his car and then Vance and him questioning Joe and me. <laughs> Joe thinking I was his girl in that year. Gee, it was swell. I'm glad. Oh, sure it was swell, Frankie. Only thing is, it's going to keep me from getting that money-making machine from Joe. He doesn't know what I'm playing along with him for. Sometimes I ain't sure either. Huh? you double-cross anybody in a minute if there was some excitement in it, Jeannie. If you're double-crossing Joe Crane, you'd do it to me, too, if you got a chance. To you? Frankie. Oh, never. Never, she says. You have a lot on me, Jeannie, and I'm not sure whether I like that or not. Well, look, Frankie, I gotta get over to see Joe. We gotta stay in town because the cops told us to. I better see him so I can make plans to get that machine away from him. Sit down, Jeannie. But I gotta... Sit down! Why? What for? What's going on? As I said, you know too much about me. So I have a little present for you. This. Hey, hey, now, wait a minute, Frankie. What's a gun for? You... You aren't going to kill me. I, I didn't do anything, Frankie. I, I wouldn't... said anything about killing you. I said I have a present for you. This gun. Here, take it. Oh. You're going to need it if you keep trying to outsmart a guy like Joe Crane. Now, Markham, you don't have to tell me that it's all very irregular and very illegal. I know it. I'm rapidly becoming convinced that it was a mistake to let Crane and his girl out of custody, Vance. You only allowed them to leave because I asked you to. And believe me, Markham, you can pick him up on the larceny charge at any time. Well, that's so. But I want him free so I can prove murder against him. So you said yesterday. All right, Vance, I'll go along with this a little while longer. By the way, how does that money-making machine work? I think I have an idea. The design you put on a blank piece of paper actually came out on the dollar bill. It was on it when Crane gave me the bill, and it was a good bill, Markham. Perhaps there was a camera in the machine. You took a picture of the design, then stamped it on the... 
No, no, that's preposterous. It couldn't possibly be done that way. It wasn't. Don't tell me that machine actually makes money from blank pieces of paper, Vance. No, I won't tell you that either, because that isn't true. But Markham, talking to you just now has given me an idea. Yes? What details of the death of Sniffy Edwards have you released? None, except that we found his body. That's all anybody knows. Good. Now, Markham, if I'm right about how that machine works, I think I can promise to bring Joe Crane into your office again, only this time with a very solid murder charge against him. <laughs> you sure you go for me, Jeannie? You positive? I'm positive. I'm superlative. I'm everything, Joe. <laughs> I just don't want to do a thing except hang around you. Good. Don't that prove something? Maybe. Ah, Joe. What about Frank Lacey? Used to be pretty sweet on him. Sure, I used to be. I didn't give you any guarantee I'm going to be in love with you forever, Joey. Yeah, I know, but I hope so. <laughs> All I know is right now, you're for me. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Joey, show me the money-making machine. It's over there in the corner. Go look at it. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean, show me how it works. I know that machine is nothing but a roller with two slits and a phony bottom. You feed blank paper in one slit, turn the roller, and it picks up a legit dollar bill from the bottom and slips it out the other side. Only, how do the initials get on the bill? I'll write you a letter about it sometime. Oh, come on, Joey. Tell me. I want to... Okay, Joey. For on what? your feet. Frank. Sure, Frank. Frank Lacey. And I'm getting a little tired of playing games. Come here, Joey. Hey, leave him alone, Frank. Shut up. Okay, Frank, what's with you? What's going on? What do you want? That machine over in the corner. The one Steffi Edwards invented. And I want the monogram gimmick. Jeannie here was supposed to get it for me, but I've been waiting too long. Let's have the story, Joey. How do you do the monogram thing? Oh, that. Well, you see, Frank, you... Wait! Gene, uh, Gene, help, help me! Help Jimmy. me! Sure, I'll help you. Thanks, Jeannie. He was killing me. Thanks for shooting him. Oh, that's all right, Joey. Pleasure was all mine. That's a funny thing, though. Frank gave me the gun this morning, and I kill him with it this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> that's life. I'd thank you a little more, Jeannie, if I was awful sure who you was aiming at when you shot. Joey! Don't Joey me. Let you and I... Wait a minute. We'll talk about you and me in a little while. Yeah? This is Joe Crane. Who's this? Friend of Sniffy Edwards. So? So, I got all of Sniffy's machines, and I thought maybe you'd like to buy them cheap. How cheap? hundred bucks a piece. I got ten of them. You can get a fortune for them. Why don't you sell them? I'm hot. Gotta leave the country. Yeah. How do I know this is on the level? Nobody knows Sniffy's gimmick on how them monograms go from the blank paper to the good dough, do they? Nobody except you and Sniffy. And you. That's right. And me. I got the whole gimmick right under my thumb. I tell you enough for you to meet me? You know what it is. Where are you? In a joint called Molly's in the waterfront. Walk right through and into the back room. I'll be there. Only don't be too long, Joey. I'm hot, like I told you. The only thing that'll cool me off is cold cash. <laughs> Vance, you look like a professional panhandler if I ever saw one. Where did you get such ugly-looking clothes? Bought them, Markham. These overalls, this jacket, this cap, and these shoes cost me $7. <laughs> think I got cheated? Well, I don't know now. You've been doing some cheating yourself, I think. Cheating the barber, that is. When did you shave last? Yesterday morning. Pretty bad, eh? Not for what you're trying to do. If you can get what you think you can on Joe Crane, what's the difference how you look? That's exactly the... Uh -oh. Who is it? That's your cue, Markham. Go out the back door there and don't come in until I call you. Right. Good luck. Thanks. What's going on in there? I'm coming. Come on in, Crane. Where are the machines? You don't think I keep them here, do you? I ain't sure you keep them anywhere. Then what are you doing here? Look, bud, you know how Sniffy's monogram gimmick worked. You knew he let me have one of his machines to pedal. What else do you know? That you knocked him off. Oh. 
So that's the story, huh? Yeah. So long, bud. Don't take care of yourself. Wait a minute. Well? I'm still hot, and I still need dough, like I said, to get away so I can cool off. And I still got those machines, ten of them. I'll give you a hundred bucks for them. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Now you give me a thousand bucks extra for keeping my mouth shut about you shooting Sniffy. Shooting Sniffy? <laughs> you don't know too much, do you? Sniffy was knife dope. Go ahead, talk all you want it. You get the hundred for the machines and you get moving out of town. I don't think I will. I think you'll be doing the moving, Crane, right into jail. Hey, you're no bum. What goes with that talk? Who are you? We've met, Crane. I'm Philo Vance. And you've told me all I wanted to know about you. Only one person would know how Sniffy Edwards was killed. And that was the man who killed him. What you know won't do you any good. I'm good at... Oh, yeah. All right, Markham, you can come in now. I heard you two fighting, but I didn't want to spoil your fun, Vance. I'm glad you didn't. Well, there's your larcenist, Markham. Yes. Only now he's your murderer, too. You will have no trouble getting a conviction. But after we take him downtown, I'll tell you the details of the traveling monogram, which was the initial step in making Joe Crane show his hand. <laughs> Markham, as soon as Crane was convinced that I knew how a monogram on a blank piece of paper could be transferred to a real dollar bill, he had no hesitancy about coming down to the waterfront and talking to me. And in talking to you, Vance, he gave himself away. I know that. And I know we found Frank Lacey's body in the Crane's apartment, so we actually have him for two murders. But I don't understand how the device worked. I'll show you. Here's the machine Crane used, and some of the paper that comes with it. Yes? Write something on the paper. Here. Here's my pen. All right. I'll put down my initials. F, X, M. There we are. Very well. I take the paper... Yes. ...and slip it into the machine. But before I do, I cover what you wrote with my thumb so the ink gets on my thumb. The ink gets on... Then I turn the handle of the machine and out comes a new dollar bill. Well, I take it out of the machine and as I do, I press my thumb still with the wet ink on it on the bill and your initials are transferred to it. Oh, brother, no, it can't be that simple. Oh, but it was. <laughs> I see the dollar bill with my initials on it, but I'd never have known how they got there. Oh, really? I would have sworn that dollar bill actually was the blank piece of paper I saw you put in the machine. Well, Markham, the secret of the device was in its simplicity. It certainly was. Well, we don't have to worry about it now. Nor about Sniffy Edwards' murder, nor about any of the people concerned with it. That's right. Let's cart this machine down to the river and throw it overboard. That will be the end of it. The end of it, and thanks to you, the end of the money machine murder case. Welcome back. Okay, first thing, uh, I am pretty sure that under normal 
prosecutorial guidelines, you want to preserve any exhibits that might be used as evidence at trial. Now let's imagine the hearing. Mr. Markham, uh, the defense is requesting, and I think this is quite reasonable, that you produce the money machine that you allege was part of this whole and the possession of which is at the core of the motive for the murder. Your Honor, I can't because it is currently unavailable. A and why would that be? Uh, because, Your Honor, I threw it into the Hudson River. And why did you do that? Because Philo Vance told me. Now, in real life, Markham would be all, in all kinds of trouble, but I kind of imagine that in the Philo Vance universe, the judge would say, I I I'll allow it, sure. And why did Vance want to throw this thing in the river? I mean, it's not like it was some terrible secret that could destroy mankind. No, I don't know. It is the Philo Vance universe. And I suppose someone could get a hold of it, and there are so many people who are gullible enough to fall for it that Vance is just not taking the risk. I mean, I, I imagine in the Philo Vance universe, people will fall for almost anything. And of course, you have to wonder once again what Markham thinks his job is, because at the end of the episode, Vance says, you know, we're not going to have to worry about anybody involved in this case, and we're just totally, completely through with it. And Markham agreed, yes, we're totally done, when in reality, Vance would have to testify in court, and Markham is going to have to be worried about all of these people, uh, many of whom are either defendants or potential witnesses, and in prosecuting them. But on the other hand, Markham continues to fulfill police officer responsibilities like high-speed chases. It makes you wonder how the public forums go for uh, uh, district attorney elections. Now, Mr. Markham, you can ask a question of your opponent. Yes, I'd like to ask you, do you have any experience as a stunt driver? Uh, no, I don't see how that's relevant to being district attorney. Oh, you don't. A and let me ask, do you have a fast car? I, I just, just drive a normal sedan. I see. You are not prepared to be district attorney. Are you ready to hunt down criminals and bring them back alive yourself? Are you ready to obsessively investigate every crime? Guessing horribly all the time, and then, finally, once somebody else solves the case, apprehending the criminal. Uh, you know, that is not really the job of district attorney. I mean, we just prosecute the cases once they're arrested. Oh, no, no, no. Once they're arrested, we're just done. We're done. I, I never have to think about these people once they're arrested. That's, uh, I don't know actually whose job that is, but it's not mine. At the same time, I have to say of the woman who was the victim of the scam... How bad do you have to be handling life to be chewed out by Markham for being very foolish? Listener comments and feedback now. And we start with YouTube. And we have a comment from Candace. Uh, Candace writes, Thank you so much for sharing this with us to enjoy. I love Philo Vance. I can listen to these for hours on end, much better than the stuff that's on TV nowadays. And I would actually agree with that with about 99% of uh, television these days. And then Lucy writes, thank you. I stay in these programs as much as I love A Christmas Carol. A lot. Well, thank you so much, Lucy. And I appreciate your listening and your encouragement. And then we have a review over in the Apple Podcast Store in Australia. And uh, uh, this comes from Cardinal Chudner. Uh, I've listened to... Uh, this for years now. It's followed me from phone to phone. The before and after commentary may not be for some, but 
I find it adds to the experience. I love the radio adverts when they're left in. Gives you a real feeling of hearing it at the time of broadcast. While the post-show commentary feels like a conversation with like-minded listeners. Keep up the good work, Adam. You are the reason I know Boise, Idaho exists. Well, thank you so much, and I never dreamed growing up that I would be an international goodwill ambassador for Boise, Idaho, but here we are. (laughs) Thank you again so much. Appreciate your comment over there in the Australian Apple Store. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Carrie, Patreon supporter since November 2018, currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Carrie. And that will actually do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. All those great things that help the channel to grow. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Follow Vance, but join us back here tomorrow for the conclusion of the Bennett Matter, where... The building was destroyed by fire. I worked with arson experts from my own organization and with the police here to determine the cause of the fire. Go on, please. At the scene of the fire, our expert, William Underwood, located certain items which we recognized as part of the paraphernalia generally used by professional arsonists. Will you please state what those items were? A scrap of celluloid and a paraffin wick. Anything else? Samples of the ashes, which were later analyzed and proved to be celluloid ashes. I wish to remind the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that the public fire adjuster, the gentleman from the Skyline Laboratories, and the two gentlemen from the fire inspection department have previously testified as to the identity and uses of these items. Will you continue, Mr. Dollar? Well, these particular items suggested that the fire was of an incendiary origin. The next problem was to establish the exact method used in starting the fire. Were you able to determine that method? Yes, sir. In order to refresh the minds of the jury, would you mind describing what was established? A heavy woolen wick. This one, Mr. Dollar? That one, or one like it. Exhibit C. Please continue. This wick had been soaked in paraffin and then stuffed into a paper sack that was filled with celluloid. It's a simple method. The wick is lit... uh, and it takes anywhere from three to ten minutes to burn down to the celluloid. Now, once that happens, the celluloid flares up and fires anything combustible in the vicinity. And that is the method you determined caused the fire in the Bennett building? Yes. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.